Welcome back to the channel. Today I am reviewing the Schrade Alpha Series Radoc. So this is a new knife. It's a US made knife. Uh, Schrade is really kind of advertising these knives. I'm going to unbox it because unboxing this thing is kind of an event in itself. But there are some problems with this knife. So we're going to get into that and take a look. So really cool design on the box there. Kind of open and slide. Knife comes out of a sock, kind of like a Benchmade. Here is the knife itself. So this is a large knife in S35VN. It is a Warncliffe style blade, which I really like. Here it is next to a zero tolerance 452 carbon fiber. Here is my typical Benchmade Griptilian. Uh, so you can see that's a pretty big knife. Blade is almost four inches on that one. Here is a bug out, just so you get an idea there. Big knife, uh, but it's not too heavy of a knife. I'll drop a weight in here later. I want to get right into what's going on with this knife because there's pretty much nothing on this knife that is straight or tight or even. I changed my camera setup so I can show you close up to the carbon fiber here. So the carbon fiber on this knife is riddled with voids. You can see like there's kind of holes in it. There's little seams where it hasn't closed properly. Lots of little pits and things in that carbon fiber, uh, which is just, I mean, it's really cheap. You know, that's cheaply done. And this is not a cheap knife. Uh, you can see a little seam up there. So right off the bat, we got issues. Uh, you can also see... If you're seeing the light reflection there, see all that unevenness in the grinding of the carbon fiber. Look on the back here too, that, that seam is not even, that, that beveling is not even side to side there. Uh, down here you can see, like, see all those little divots there? Those aren't just, you know, waves in the carbon fiber. Those are actually gouges into the grinding of the carbon fiber. Uh, so right away, that's a lot of problems. Uh, if you look at the blade grinds, right, the blade grinds are uneven. This thing on the, this uh, dip on the back here comes down to about here on this side. You can see it comes down much further on the other side. Uh, the jimping on the back of the blade isn't straight, right? You can see the thumb stud goes here. The jimping is off an angle this way coming on the back of the blade. It's, I've never seen that before. It's it's very bizarre. Uh, bearings are, they were not particularly smooth when I got it. They have smoothed out. So that's actually probably okay at this point. Uh, the blade does have a little bit of front to back play. It's not bad, but it's there. I tightened up the pivot. The side to side play went away. So okay, but not not the greatest. I do want to point out the lock face, right? So if you look down in there at the lock face, you can see that's been ground and it looks like it's been ground with a Dremel and it's not even. You can see right on the lock face right there, see that line right there going left to right back across? That's where it's been ground. It's not polished or anything. If you look at a bench made or something like that. See how that lock face is all nice and smooth? That line there is not a grind line, that's just from where the lock sits. And it's all smooth and it's not uneven or anything. Uh, because of that unevenness, I can twist the lock bar like this and there's a little bit of play in it. Uh, you know, there's a little bit of play in it down here too when it's like this. That's, I mean, it's not, unheard of, but it's worse than it is in most other knives. Uh, the liners on this blade, if you look down the liner, right, see that bend right there? That liner is bent from the factory, and I have not disassembled this knife, this knife yet. Uh, it does not sit up evenly to the scale. You can see there's a gap in there. Uh, this knife is just I mean, it's so bad. Uh, 
the jimping on the back of the blade is sharp, right? It digs into my thumb. Uh, it's not comfortable. The handle is nice and comfortable. I love the blade, sh the, the handle shape. You know, it locks in my hand nice and nice and sturdy. The blade shape is great as a, as a utility knife. It didn't make the stock too thick or too thin. There's a lot about this knife that is kind of just right. But the execution of just the quality control on this is, I mean, it's, it's literally the worst I've ever seen. Uh, you know, there's some other, some quibbles like the, uh, the, the detent is very weak. If I just flip my hand a little bit like that, I can flip it out very easily. Uh, in some areas, that's going to be a legal issue. Thankfully, where I live, it's not. Um... I mean, just a lot of little quality control stuff like that. The pocket clip is not keyed. It's not like recessed down in there very well. It was loose when I when I got it. I tightened it up. It tightened up okay. Um, can't switch it sides, obviously. It just, you know, the quality control is just not there for a knife that is this expensive. Uh, this is uh, a Ganzo, right? This was a $25 knife. It has none of these problems. Carbon fiber is nice and even. Blade glant grinds are nice and even. Bearings nice and smooth. Unfortunately, you can't get this particular knife anymore because they discontinued it. But like this is twenty five bucks, right? This when I bought it, uh, two hundred and ten dollars for that type of quality control. I'm used to that type of money being zero tolerance money, right? This has no quality control issues. Uh, very smooth, very even, very solid. You know, I just, I can't see why you would buy something like this when something like this is available for essentially the same price. Uh, I will say that this knife did have very good edge retention. So in my edge retention tests, uh, I did 350 cuts, which is consistent with what S35VN should do uh, when it has a good heat treat. This knife is S35VN. Until I actually did that test, I was questioning in my head whether this was a fake. I bought it from a reputable place, uh, but, you know, it's, it's, it's just really bad. This is a Kaiser Odin, which I'll be doing a review of because they re-released this uh, just recently. Uh, you know, $20, $30 cheaper, none of the issues. Uh, similar materials, this one even has titanium handle, just like the, the Zero Tolerance. But yeah, I'm I'm quite frankly shocked that Schrade is actually advertising these knives. I would I would be selling these off where nobody will ever know I put my name on them if I made this knife. This is not good. Uh, I'm gonna put a link for this down in the description, but please don't buy this knife, <laughs> right? Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and disassemble it. I'm not gonna do a separate disassembly video for this one because I don't think it warrants it. Uh, the pivot bolt here is not keyed, so it does require two tools to remove the pivot bolt. Gotta have a T8 on both sides to get that out of there. It is thread lockered, so they have done that. Uh, there's the bolt. Stick it in my handy dandy magnetic tray. I'm gonna see if I can push, yes, I can. So I was able to push the pivot out. You can see there's a bolt in both sides of that. It's not, uh, not a single piece bolt. Uh, blade slides right out. They have recessed the bearings into the blade rather than the handle, which means there's not a lot of metal. You can see that metal in there uh, where the blade goes on is pretty thin. It's not a choice I would have made on a blade that's this long that's going to have that much leverage on it. Uh, let's get into the handle here. Pivot is T8. Handle is T6s all the way up and down. I am going to have to take off the pocket clip to get to the handle. So you'll be able to see what's in that pocket clip there. Those are long pocket clip bolts because they're going all the way down through the carbon fiber and into the steel liner. Interestingly enough, this is a pretty lightweight knife, but it could have been lighter. 
because there's no skeletonizing on the steel liners here. And I only think that that was done because of a cost saving measure, uh, because there's no reason not to. They're plenty thick to handle the skeletonizing, but they didn't do it. And that, again, it speaks of cost saving, which is weird because this knife is so expensive. Uh, so they tried to save some costs there. Okay, so the, the pocket clip is keyed. Uh, unfortunately, it's not keyed tightly enough to keep it from wiggling. So even though that slots down into the carbon fiber, again, quality control, it wiggles. So, eh, kind of strange. You wouldn't think that it would do that. Uh, just, you know, nothing about this knife impresses me from a quality control perspective. It's all been done cheaply. Uh, again, surprising given the fact that the knife is so expensive. I don't really even know where you find carbon fiber that's manufactured this badly. 2023. Uh, yeah, it's just, just disappointing all around. That last bolt on the other side would not come out. So I am doing this side first. Two bolts per side besides the... Yeah, yeah, I'm going to have to clamp those. There we go. To get them out because they're not coming out. Uh, also worth noting, those standoffs are cheap hardware store versions. Uh, you know, on a $200 knife, I expect a machined kind of standoff like that on the zero tolerance. That's just a cylinder, right? I mean, come on. Give us something. Give us something a little nicer on a knife you're going to charge that much for. See if I can get this out without damaging it. Okay, there's that bolt. There's your carbon fiber liner, obviously skeletonized for your axis type lock. There's your spring. So you can see, yeah, no skeletonizing in that entire liner. Yeah, again, just kind of kind of cheap out, cheaped out, except for it's still very expensive. Uh, there's the standoff. Let's get this last one. And then we can get the lock portion apart. There's the lock portion, there's the last bolt, other spring comes out, and then there's a stop pin. So you can see, again, no relief into the liners uh, because they're so thin, and that's done for lightness. Uh, but then it all has to be done in the blade to make the knife thinner. So some durability issues there, uh, definitely a lot of construction issues. There's that, that liner again. You can see that's just bent, right? Uh, so, yeah. I mean, it holds an edge well, but I really, really do not recommend this knife. And that's a shame because I really liked the idea of this knife and what they're trying to do with it. Um, but execution and quality are just not there. So that is my review. Hope it's helpful. Like, subscribe, do all the YouTube stuff. Enjoy your adventures.